He did it four or five times early in the first half. It was incredible. He'd step with the ball and put his foot on it. And we were screaming at him to try and do it. After a few seconds, they start looking around at each other. Then the crowd start making noise. They're playing against their, their local rivals and already on the back of a bad result in the, in the first game. Um, so at some point, and it happened, someone got anxious and they jumped. So the game was, um, was the second derby game against Cardiff away. We'd won the first one 3-0. We'd been putting a really, really excellent performance at home. It was a big day for us as a group of staff, really, as well, because we'd started the season fairly slowly, as we thought we might when we first came in, and we'd started to pick up a, a couple of results by that point. And that result really helped us build a connection with the supporters, really helped the players in their belief of what we were doing, and gave them a lot of good evidence and best practice, if you like, moving forward for the stuff they'd done brilliantly on the day. Because the way they played and handled the occasion was... Uh, was incredible, really. So we had an opportunity in this game to go to Cardiff towards the back end of the season and to do the double. Crazy stat that hadn't been done before that season. Well, it hadn't been done ever. Our team had changed a little bit since uh, January. We made a few signings. Uh, Andrew Fisher was in goal, so he'd come in the team by that point and done really, really well. Joel Atabodier had really started establishing himself at left centre half. He was, was excellent for us in the run into the end of last season. Carl Norton, who I'm sure we'll speak about at some point, brings unbelievable composure, courage, technical ability to the team and was outstanding. And they didn't want to press Carl. And it was, it was something we spoke about in the build up to the game and happened a fair bit in the game, which helped us a lot to manage the occasion. He was incredible. Ben Cabango, who um, scored and had, had a brilliant game. Then we had Cyrus Christie, who was a big difference for us. Him and Hannes Wolf as wing backs, they played really high, really aggressive to build up the way he wanted to. We needed him high up the pitch to pin back their back five, if you like, or to turn it into a back five and not allow them to be a back three, to try and pin their wing backs back because they matched us up in a shape or fairly similar. So those guys had a real dimension for us. We had a four and a six, really. We didn't play it as uh, two, two sitters, two pivots on the day. We played Flynn as a... Um, so we saw it as a back four. It's just that Flynn doesn't play here next to Norts. He plays in front. And his job solely on the day was to protect Kyle and to try and screen in front for these guys as much as possible and help us smooth the game out and recycle possession, which he'd done incredibly well. And obviously it led to him going into the Premier League now doing fantastically for West, West Ham. And um, he was incredible on the day. Grimes then played as a six, we call it four and a six, to join in and jump in with a press with the front five, but to also play around Flynn whilst he held the middle of the pitch and to get on the ball and to cause them problems in possession because they tried to match up a box midfield or whatever people want to call it, out of possession is what they did. And I think they expected us to be like that. So they wanted to match up. But with Grimesy moving around and working around Flynn, it became difficult to pick up. Uh, so Matt Grimes there, the captain, incredible, incredible footballer. So brave, technical, just brilliant. We'll take the ball anywhere. And then we had Jamie Patterson and Joel Perot. At this point in the season, Joel Perot had gone from being the number nine to coming back to the eight. And Michael Abafemi, especially in this game, plan as a nine, because we really felt his pace could uh, really hurt Cardiff, especially if they're at home. They need to get after the ball a little bit. They leave space in behind and we felt his pace would be a little bit too much for their uh, back five. So we had Pato, who had been, um, Jamie Patterson, who had been excellent, really excellent, but he'd been out of the team for quite a while. He came back in, had a real impact in this game after coming back from injury and a bit of time out uh, of the team. And then Joel Perot, who is seriously intelligent as a, as a football player. And they link up uh, incredibly well for the first goal. My club, Femi, was a beautiful goal, but um, that was our team. The first game very much was about dealing with the threat that they had in Kiefer Moore. It's when we started really establishing Flynn Downs' role in the, in the team, that when the ball came direct, which it did a lot more in the first game than it did in the second game, was as the ball travelled, is Flynn to make sure that he's in the line of uh, Kiefer Moore, especially playing against Carl Norton, who's the height difference between him and uh, Kiefer Moore is big, to get Flynn in front and fighting and, and trying to get Kiefer Moore involved in that so that these guys could play close together and sweep up. At the same time, with Matt Grimes and the two eights really focused on crushing this space and getting here for the second ball and establishing, establishing this line out position. So they had lots of bodies running after the ball when they were in position, once they went forward, because they were quite direct in the first game. So our job here for Flynn and for the guys just in front was to get really close together and try and smooth the game out and take control of the game as much as possible. But in the first instance, really trying to threaten 
here and put pressure on the ball so it doesn't come with much quality. In the second game, it was about they were trying to play. They changed a few players, so they were playing differently in terms of um, in terms of their build up. So it was about making sure the eights were really aggressive with Michael in the, in the build up to the when they started uh, possession. So we didn't allow them any time to build up, especially away from home, to cause them some anxiety in moments because they were trying to play at this point under Steve. They, they were playing a bit more than they had done for sure. So keeping the first line of the press as the nine and the two eights and Matt Grimes joining in and making sure that he can affect the holding midfielder, which then left, they had two here. And Flynn, as I said, done a, an amazing job, an amazing job in protecting um, these guys. So they had Jordan Hugo with Harris trying to run and the two eights in here where our wing backs could affect the eight and block this passing line when we went to press, force it to the outside and then go. And then everyone across the pitch. So as the ball went here, we actually tried to get it down the left side because we felt that was uh, their stronger side, the right. So as soon as it went to the right, we pressed to the outside, we blocked this pass, the wing back would come low because otherwise you couldn't see the ball. And then the minute it went here, that was it. Everyone was in, Michael was in, Grimesy Flynn was across. We were ready to engage, protect the space down this side of the pitch as he ran. Everyone in, and we spoke so much about quartering the pitch off, about being really aggressive and brave with it, and the only person being outside the quarter of the pitch being the opposite wing back who would come in and make a back four out of possession. So to try and force them back or to force them into something down the line where we would be really close together and smooth the game out, it happened a lot. Really aggressive high line or to force back. And then the minute the ball went back is to really press, to really get after the ball and force back again, the whole team move and get ready. So really aggressive position. Grimes, you would jump from one unit to the next. The wing backs would become the same. They jump from the defensive unit if they're on the opposite side of the pitch to this second line of the press. So we'd have top line of the press, first line we spoke about, second line, but really narrow and making sure the game was played outside of us and nothing through because on occasions we'd watched them and it was a, it becoming a feature of their play under Steve was to try and get the holding midfielder on a the ball where they could, they, had, they could do damage because they had really good athleticism uh, at the top end of the pitch. So it was to try and make sure they played around or had to go direct, which is what they started doing a bit more because we pressed really well early on in the game. Um, and then it was about smoothing out the game really well with uh, Flynn focusing, being in front of Jordan Hugo as much as possible and Grimes, he crushing the space as soon as the ball was hit and the team becoming connected again once that was done. So we had the two centre-halves, Norts being the spare man, competing, trying to compete, Flynn in front, especially if Hugo, Matt Grimes would crush the space, the eights would make their way back and the wing-backs would end up dropping back in. So we had plenty of numbers to build up with when we won the ball. when they got higher up the pitch. I mean, we had a lot of uh, control of the ball because the, the players were so brave. But So we'd have the back three close, again, always trying to leave Carl Norton as a spare man. So even if they progressed up the pitch and they had the uh, wide player on the ball, drama, whoever, they liked to run the eight underneath the ball. So it was Matt Grimes' job, ball side. If it wasn't, if it was Flynn already on this side, he'd established, then Grimes would get to the middle quickly. But a lot of the time it was Matt Grimes to go with the runner because we didn't want that. We didn't want them running off and getting into the box and creating a chance. So he would go. And as he did go with the runner, is to try and force to the outside still. So if it went, no problem, you get back in, force it back. But a lot of the time it was a decoy run to open something up in here where they're, let me uh, reestablish the board. So where they're uh, opposite um, number eight or their number six would try and come into the space to get the ball. So it was really important. But as uh, Matt Grimes went with the run, the decoy run a lot of the time, as it went back, the eights crushed the space. Really, really important. They stay connected to the team. It is my preference that we never ever have big distances or waiting for um, a counter attack. There's like players waiting in positions where a lot of teams do it with really good effect, but really important for us we talk about connection and distances in a team all the time and it's so important that we um we do that out of possession and in possession so they would end up with their back three their opposite wing back trying to get high up the pitch so we end up the only time we end up in the back five grimes he would matt grimes would run with the midfielder so then they would try and establish the opposite eight to get in but when our team is really connected it's difficult so they would have to re clear this space again and then it was uh, about them trying to set back for a cross to beat someone 1v1, where if you're going to get beat, get beat on the outside, never let them in, inside of the pitch, get beat to the outside. We talk to the players all the time about dropping their ego. It's no problem if you 
If you show someone to the outside and make it predictable for our team, you give everyone a chance. If you get beat, try and really hard to defend 1v1, we're never going to criticise you. If you're worried about getting beat or how it looks or whatever, and you overshoot and you let someone in the pitch is, is a problem for us. It's always trouble for us. So it's something we spoke about. They would get there often, Cardiff, and then set back for someone's cross. So we worked so hard on the defenders to make sure we had a spare guy uh, in, the, in the box. Two wide centre-halves to mark and to stay marking in the box as the ball was getting delivered to try and squeeze up with the ball to take territory to make sure the defenders took the strikers here to then get back on the side. But as they did run again, to stay in contact, so we had a spare man. And it was all about to give the goalkeeper space to come and collect, or for Carl Norton to defend clear, but mo most of the time to try and give him enough time and space to bring the ball down, to gain control of the ball, which is what the whole game was about for us. Because the more we had the ball, after winning the first game, away from home, against a, a, a Cardiff team who had been a bit on a bit of a resurgence. They were doing quite well under Steve at that time. They started to pick up a little bit of belief, uh, a bit of momentum. We felt to have control of this was so important, as it is in all of our games. is, is my preference as a, a coach or whatever is the team has the majority of the ball. But as much as we can, when they have moments where they're on top, unfortunately for us, they didn't have a huge amount. But when they did, for someone to be able to take this thing out of the game by controlling the ball rather than clear it, or for the guys to make contact and keep people out of the box and be really brave and aggressive, squeezing it so the goalkeeper could get it. Once we have the ball, we're in control, which adds to the anxiety of Cardiff players being at home, losing the first game. So in the first half, they left Carl Norton on the ball a lot and didn't want to jump out. They felt if they were in a good shape, if Norts had the ball, they were in a good shape to, to not let anyone really hurt them and nothing through them. So they were happy for us to play around. So we put the wide centre halves quite aggressive, not back here. We put them just on the outside of their two um, to also try and entice these guys to free up the eights, whose job it is always to operate behind the line, not to run and get the ball in front of people, is to operate behind the line. Two specialists in Jamie Patterson and uh, Joel Perot, who received brilliantly. Awareness, fantastic. If they got too aggressive, with their uh, wide centre halves to jump on the eights. We felt that Michael um, being 1v1 with, with Aidan Flint a lot of the time, um, who's, who's been an excellent defender for a long time, but with his pace against any defender, to be honest, would be uh, really advantageous to us. So we felt if we could leave him in a position where he's not playing here as a number nine and getting it to his feet and fighting, always to play here. So if the ball's on this side of the pitch, always here, ready. So if they jump, here, it leaves a big space to run in. So to not come ball side is to let the number eight do that. So the real focus for Michael was as the ball got transferred, was again, just to come here, to drift here, to be the opposite side of the ball. So if they got antagonized and they jump, the eight would roll out to see if he really wanted to come that far. And if they did, this pass was here for Michael. And Ben Cabango ended up actually playing a pass like that. And we, we, ne we nearly scored from it on the day. It was, it was really great when you see some stuff you've worked on obviously come off. So as the ball transferred, these guys on the outside of their front two, because if they go too wide too early, they uh, try and stop this. We have a pass in the middle of the pitch where these guys could cause some damage, where Grimes would move into space, give Flynn the space, antagonise the next person, invite the next person, hook the next person, uh, what we call it, into the press. And then there'd be space for us to go and operate at the top end. So they stayed narrow in the first bit. So instead of which we, we sometimes do to try and make, is most of the time when we have a one guy pressing, have a 2v1 to try and play and, and take advantage in terms of territory. We would try and do that, but against a two man press, it was about seeing how long they were willing to wait before they got antagonized. Because with the emotion of the crowd, the Cardiff fans being desperate to see their team run after the ball against our team that were playing with so much confidence, just watch them with pride and gratitude so much, with real threat on the outside of pitching Cyrus and Hannes, which changed the dynamic of the team from January onwards, really, um, because they'd both done such a good job. So aggressive, willing to run and reset and to move people, to give space. They both built brilliant partnerships with a, with a number eight. And th this partnership is so important because when this guy come too aggressive and we played to the outside centre halves, which was a really important part of our game, if they, if they did press and we, and we played here, and the eight came 
And a lot of the time, most teams end up jumping here, but they didn't. What happened with Cardiff was Cody Drama jumped here because he's so athletic, so athletic. And as I spoke about earlier, it left us big space for Hannes to operate in, to roll into. Um, and once he did, we would then have Grimes already behind the line, Matt Grimes in a six to play into, and then we'd had opportunities to go on there. So um, we'd, we'd spoke about this, about he was so good at pressing, uh, Cody Drama in the games he watched into the build up that he would he could end up doing both jobs because he was he was really athletic and really aggressive so his starting position would be in here a lot which would give them a lot of space to cover they come too wide too early again Michael would run be on the opposite side of the ball but if at times which did happen Hannes's width pinned him back and he would try and get there or be too aggressive on um Jamie early, Hannes would have to run and put a seed of doubt. So what happened then was where he get caught in between, he got caught in between, and we'd end up getting Pato on the ball behind the line where we could go and operate. And actually, for the goal, is we could, we'll talk about in a minute, uh, higher up the pitch is a brilliant, um, Pato's position is brilliant because he recognised that neither player can mark him. So he just goes and drifts into space where he recognises he can get the ball and he causes him real damage. But in the initial part of the game, was and there couldn't be anyone better for us to do it. Speaking to Carl Norton and see how long he could stand on the ball before they antagonised someone, before we could hook someone. So Jordan Hugel and, and, and Mark Harris in particular, one was trying to stay with, with, um, with Flynn or trying to block Flynn as much as he possibly could. And the other was trying to protect the middle. So Grimes, he would work and Flynn would work and they'd be on a separate line. So if Grimes, he came short, Flynn would move away. If... Um, Flynn Downs comes short, Matt Grimes would move away, so they're never on the same line. We don't want them to like this and playing in front, so we have five players just playing in front of their team. We want to cause them as many problems as possible. So they were trying to block them too, with guys in between trying to deal with the eights or block the passing line to the eights, but also being ready to jump out to the wide centre half. So we needed them close enough that they could antagonise people. But in the first instance, it was about Carl Norton, seeing how long it would take for him to travel with the ball or in some occasions just stand on the ball to see what he could do to the mentality of their team or, or the anxiety in the crowd. And he did it four or five times early in the first half. It was incredible. He'd step with the ball and put his foot on it. And we were screaming at him to try and do it. After a few seconds, they start looking around at each other. Then the crowd start making noise. They're playing against their, their local rivals and already on the back of a bad result in the, in the first game. So at some point, and it happened, someone got anxious and they jumped. And the minute they jumped, it left someone free. And the guys, is why they played close distance. If the ball went this side, we try and protect. And as they jumped, you always had a pass, short pass. Matt Grimes would arrive and he did it brilliantly. So it was about us trying to control the game and control the temperature of the game, really, and the, the, the atmosphere by dominating this, by dominating the football and controlling it but moving it with speed and Norts did it so well. He would step, would play really, really calm, composed, good body language. We'd be looking at the top line all the time where we'd have a lot of runners. We spoke about it all the time, that if he's in close enough in range and they're quite high, to always run, to disrupt the lines, give other people space, to run, to give someone else space to come and work uh, together as a unit, to have Michael always, always in between to be able to run and affect their line somewhere because they were going to defend with five and press with five. So the whole midfielder would also jump at times to try and play against our five and at times leave five for five. So we knew if we broke the first line of the press, we were, um, we were in a good place. As we got into the middle third and took their first line of the press out, the most important bit for us was to try and get the eights on the ball behind the line against one sitter to try and get someone else to jump or to see who would jump. And then for Grimesy to go and join in and help the five attack. So to create the six person and to get really high and to keep them there for as long as possible. So Flynn Downs and Matt Grimes both at times traveled with the ball quite a long way. Once we broke the first line of the press and these guys were out of the game, in particular, these guys were recovering. It was our job as uh, wide centre halves to go with them. So these were recovering into the midfielder. As these would recover, go and stay really close, really close so we could stay there. And as he recovered, stay really close. So they would end up like this. And then a lot of the time they would come in and end up like this, which is we had dominance in the middle of the pitch then because we had five players operate in this channel uh, area of the pitch against three. If they came in, when they had time to recover and, and, they, and they came in, 
We then had real space on the outside of the pitch with either Matt Grimes like coming over here, but a lot of the time it was the centre half, Joel Atabodi and Ben Kabanga, who were playing really key and important passes from here. And in the build up to the goal is exactly what happened. They recovered and blocked natural to the first goal. Ben played here, Carl Norton, Matt Grimes, Flynn Downs was really brilliant free against their two here. At this point, they couldn't jump in the final third because they leave too much space. So it was really difficult for anyone to get out to the wide centre halves. Really difficult. And if they did, it would leave us a pass. So once we um, we got to this area, a brilliant uh, area for us to get the ball in. Ben Cabango plays it through the line because we have antagonised someone because he's so aggressive with it. We get tidied up behind the ball and make sure that um, everyone is locked in. Grimes, he would then jump to give us coverage across the pitch, two eights. And if they had to come back out because they'd done a brilliant job to recover, we'd always have Grimesy here to go and reload the guys, the eights behind the line. So they would play, reset. We always had this and then this ready to come out uh, out here. So we'd end up still Flynn protecting part of the back four that we spoke about with Carl Norton. And then the wide centre halves, really, really aggressive. So we'd have two, three, two, three. And whatever shape we play, formation, is how we like the pitch to look. We have people here to deal with anything that gets cleared. We always have a, an overload here, whether it's if they drop another player back and we um, end up in here, really aggressive here, we always have a 2v1. But in this case, when they left two up the pitch to try and counter-attack, we always have this guy to play a 3v2. So as he comes in, he reloads and then he gets back here. He gets back here, he comes in again, he reloads and he has to get back here to protect and then come on to the game. Flynn done amazingly well last season and Grimesy when he had to come and do it, Matt Grimes. But what happened is they started dropping then so we could leave 2v1 and we had really good coverage, even more numbers at the top of the pitch. Then, as I spoke about earlier with Jamie Patterson, once we broke this guy and antagonised their left side number eight, six, whatever you want to call him, to play this pass, it was a lot of work for their holding midfielder to try and do both eights. He couldn't, so we'd, they, we'd play past the press. They hadn't recovered it quickly enough. So then this guy would come all the way across with Michael on the top line. They had to drop, they had to. And then at this point, Jamie Patterson could come and operate. If he stayed here and was easily marked, at this point when Michael stretches and they drop, Jamie Patterson had a, a beautiful area to come and play into, which is how they linked up for the first goal. Pato came and linked, played in. As he got set, he carried on his run because Joel Perot was so clever. They linked, played, Michael played and span, and it was um, a really, like for our point of view, probably not from Cardiff so much, but for us and the stuff we'd spoken about, the ball speed, the control, the intensity to find the other side of the pitch here, Ben Cabango with the confidence and conviction to take territory and play forward. And then these three guys to have the capacity to realise what was going on, what we'd spoken about, for the discipline and the structure, which is so important to our play, that people hold their position for a long time, positional play. They have to be really patient. These three guys have to be so patient at times. They're not involved in the build-up. Same as these guys. They're not involved in this part of the pitch. It's like broken up for us here is the responsibility of these guys. You only arrive when they need you in the middle of the pitch. Then you come alive. You have to help us get into the final third. But then in the final third is when you come to life. And that's when you, you have to express yourself. You have to run to gaps. So when you come here and you recognise there's a there's a gap to play in, you run, you carry on running. And Joel Perot would end up taking his position. And Michael was always in between, never playing against someone. And the minute we always said to Michael, you come and build up and then you just run to goal. In the second half, where we scored um, a really nice goal in the, in the final third for us, where we played wing back to wing back. We smoothed the game out, so they cleared the ball. We had a really nice setup behind the ball. We actually had the uh, centre halves here with Flynn. Grimes had, uh, Matt Grimes had gone to join in the press. They cleared the ball. We smoothed the game out. They'd done it brilliantly, which is what they'd done so well, is what we call recycling the game. With Flynn in front, protecting the back four, protecting the back three, but that was our four. And then we, uh, we got it wide to Cyrus. They were worried about uh, the eighth position run, so no one got close enough to Cyrus to, um, to affect it. And um, we spoke so much last season about the wingbacks being so high up the pitch, they played like wingers a lot of the time for us. 
the wing back to wing back goal was like utopia for us with the wing back. Something we spoke about in the meeting all the time. And I actually, as Cyrus crossed it, I thought it was too early. I thought we had a chance to stay in the final third for a bit longer and build up. But it was a brilliant cross and Hannes done it fantastically well where he just attacked and um, was aggressive. We want Whitford at the top end of the pitch, always. But width doesn't mean the closer the goal we get, we speak about it all the time to, to our wide players, what, whatever formation we're playing, it doesn't mean this. The closer you get the goal, it just doesn't. Width is just on the outside of their shape. And if they, if you, if they end up being really split and really far apart, which they, they're not going to, they're going to leave big space for you to run. So the closer the goal we, we get, the closer the opposition get together and the closer you need to get. It's that simple. It's, um, even when the eights receive behind the line and we're high up the pitch, we don't want you to receive here. We don't want you to receive that and you definitely can't be here when the ball's to the opposite eight. You have to be. And if, they, if you start wide and we find the eight quickly between the line and he drives, if he keeps driving and he stays really wide, it's a big trouble for them. The gap's too big. He can run, he can get played. So they're going to narrow up. But at the same time, you need to narrow up and track the game. So we can play and your first touch will take you there. But we're all getting closer to the goal. And it's something we really spoke about in that day that as it gets played, these guys behind the game are not watching. They're not, because these guys are going to be working so hard to recover the opposition, is now you need to keep them there for as long as possible. So these guys would end up coming in, Flynn in front, Grimes, he would go and join in, Flynn would protect, or Joel Atabodier would come high, Flynn would protect, and what happened is this, it ended up like this a lot, where they would come back in and try and help their team out. So we would cover the pitch and keep them there for as long as possible. And when it goes wide, people have to sacrifice themselves to run. But as they do, they need to get close. So we can, we call it um, closing the net. So we can create this here where they can't get out. They can't get out. We have to close the net on them as long as possible and to stay there for as long as possible. And they did everything we'd worked on during the game. But like the technical and tactical stuff is, is, um, is not worth speaking about unless they have the mentality and the courage to, and the intensity to play in, in the way that they did, which the, they did. And, and putting the game into context, which we try and do all the time, is a bit easier when it's a local derby and they can make history and stuff. But putting the game into context for the players was really important because the mental side of it, especially trying to play this way is, is, and to try and dominate this, is the, uh, is, the most important, is the most important bit, is the courage to do it and the willingness to do it and the willingness to accept it and the moments, recognising the moments to take the temperature out of the game and bring the temperature down, bring the atmosphere down and put, put the odds in our favour, really. Because the odds are in our favour when we had that and we took all the fight out of the game, all the stuff that would usually typify a local derby. The rolling the sleeves up, the fighting, the set pieces, scrappy, just doesn't suit us. Especially against Cardiff, it didn't suit us. They're better at that than, than we are. Um, so to try and keep control of this as much as possible and uh, yeah, was really proud. It was a, a great day for us.